There are a number of ways that home buying can go horribly wrong, frankly, and I see it firsthand as a real estate agent month in, month out. In this video, I'm gonna give you four more ways that you can avoid the annoyance, the heartache, the stress, the monetary loss of when home buying does go wrong. So before we jump into it, my name is Dallas Bland. I'm an agent here in Atlanta, Georgia with eXp Realty. And if you or anyone you know is thinking about buying a home, feel free to hit the link down below, have a 15 minute chat and see if it might make sense for us to work together. And if not, I'd be happy to point you in the direction of someone that might be able to better suit what it is you're looking for. Now, let's jump right into it. Number one, mismanaged expectations. When you are going into the home buying process, it's very important that you sit down before you start going out and looking at homes and iron out what it is you're expecting out of the process, both in terms of the speed, in terms of what it is you wanna be paying on the home, and in terms of what you're actually gonna be getting in the home. You know, how many beds is it? What does the finishings look like? How large is the yard? What part of town is it in? And have a conversation with the real estate agent where the agent is completely upfront with you and tells you if what you're looking for is reasonable or not. If you go into this thinking, you know, for example, here in Atlanta, you're going to get an acre lot with completely updated appliances, updated finishings, new countertops, tile, court, I mean, just the whole thing in Sandy Springs, for example, and you want to pay $500,000, no one's going to be able to help you with that. So you need to know what it is you're looking at going in and what it is you're hoping to accomplish going in. On the other hand, if you have a super tight timeline, for example, let's say you need to be moved in four or five months, you come into it and you're like, ah, look, I need, and you rattle off a laundry list of items where there's going to be, you know, maybe two, 300 homes in the entire city that might fit that criteria, but you have three months to get moved. That's probably not going to go too well for you. And you're probably going to wind up at the end of the process, relatively frustrated, having to renew a lease, whatever the case might be. So you need to get started early, as I mentioned in a previous video, and have that conversation with your agent about what your expectations are to make sure that this doesn't go, you know, kind of wrong in terms of the emotional side of it, which it very easily can. Number two, and this is something that I've harped on over and over and over and over and over again, but I still get people that want to do this, is working with a big bank. I've never seen an experience with a big lender go as well as I have with a mortgage broker. Don't get me wrong, there are bad mortgage brokers. There are great mortgage brokers. There are good banks. There are bad banks. On the best day of a good bank, I've never seen it go as well as the best day for working with a broker. In my experience, the broker's gonna be more responsive, frankly care more about how it works out for you, and the incentives are gonna be aligned. Most of the time they're commission-based as well, whereas a lender at a big bank, they've probably got a pretty hefty salary and your deal on top of it's just a little bit of a kicker. Broker's gonna be responding to you on the weekends and they're gonna take your particular situation. They're gonna shop it around and see what programs might work for you to, you know, a dozen or so big box lenders, as opposed to a bank where they're not really incentivized to go out and try and make deals happen for you and see what they can get done for you. It's kind of just like, hey, look, go get your 620 FICO, go get the conventional, you need 20% down. If you can't, you're gonna to need to eat it on the PMI. I just am a huge advocate of working with either small banks, you can go with a, a credit union, for example, trust bank, or a mortgage broker, in my experience, if you want to have the easiest time buying. Number three, and this is something that might be a little bit of a surprise to you, is just frankly not making it a priority. You would not believe how many times I hear from prospective clients, oh look, I'm in a hurry, I need to get X, Y, and Z done, I really just want to be out of this place, you know, within six months. I go, okay, fantastic, let's get the ball rolling. I get them in touch with the lender, and then the lender calls me, he's like, what the hell, man, I can't get a hold of this guy on the phone, they won't return the phone calls. Then three months go by, and then they pop back up, and they're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm in a panic, I really need to get moved. And it's like, look, if, if you want to get this done, you need to go out and you need to make this a priority in your life for you know the duration however long it takes kind of another iteration of that is after maybe you do go out and you get your pre-qualification you get your pre-approval you start home shopping you need to find time in your schedule to go out and look at these homes if you're buying because at the end of the day this market right now you're still not going to have all the time in the world to sit around and go oh you i'll get out there in two weeks that home ain't going to be there in two weeks it's just not going to be there. And then you're going to be upset like, oh, well, I just didn't have time to get out there. And it's like, that's fine, but you got to understand. And this kind of ties into the expectations. If your availability to go look at a home is one weekend every three weeks, it's probably not going to go too well for you. And you're going to have to find time to iron out. And you really need to iron out time in your schedule and whatever ability you have so that you're available to go see a house within two or three days tops that hits the market. And that's just coming from someone that's seen a lot of people miss out on houses because, oh, I can't see it for another week. Weekend comes and goes, they get three offers on the house and then you're sitting there high and dry wondering what the hell happened. And last but certainly not least, when it comes to how to have a bad time going through the home buying process, and I see this especially often with first time home buyers, is not doing your homework up front. When I do a buyer consultation, I give my buyers basically a homework page saying, hey look, I need to know 
what's important and why so that I can provide possible alternatives as a realtor. If you don't do your homework up front, you're going to waste a hell of a lot of your own time. It's become very frustrating going all over creation, looking at these different homes. In my opinion, the far more effective way to do it is after every single showing, go through and, you know, take five minutes at the end. It doesn't have to be a 30 minute experience and say, look, we really actually decided that we don't like granite. We really want to have quartz and we decided that we're not willing to go through and put the quartz in. We don't want to spend the money. Okay, cool. So we're going to kick out everything that has granite. We're only going to send stuff that has quartz. By the way, we thought we wanted to have a fenced in backyard, but we're we're fine with putting a fence in or if we just have a little bit more of a yard we're fine with that too you make those adjustments guess what you just saved yourself going to look at two or three more houses whereas oftentimes you know agents aren't exactly eager to ask for feedback and in my opinion that's a huge disservice to the clients now the client's wasting a hell of a lot more of their time going to look at stuff that they're not interested in so do your homework up front and then kind of the b portion of that is continue to do your homework and update your homework so that you're not wasting your own time and in my experience those are four ways that you can try and negate some of the negative sides of home shopping. Now, if you have any interest, as I mentioned before, in buying or selling here in Atlanta, you can hit the link down below. I'd be happy to have a chat with you, see if it might make sense for us to work together. And if not, point you in the direction of someone that could work with you. If you want to be a good Samaritan, you can hit the like and the comment button down below. It takes two seconds of your time. It goes a hell of a long way for myself. Again, my name is Dallas Blaine. Hope to hear from you soon.